Welcome back to Supreme Black Podcast, man. This is what we be talking about when we're talking about bad cops. It has nothing to do with the color. This is the goon squad that you're looking at right now, ladies and gentlemen. Six cops that pled guilty in assault on two black men. I'm not going to talk your head off. I'm going to let you know exactly what it is. Check it out. Yes. One by one, yes. each lawman turned criminal yes. heard chilling details of the crimes against them yes. and stoically admitted their guilt in front of a judge. Yes. The so-called Rankin County Six, some of whom called themselves the Goon Squad, yes. will now be forced to reckon with the decisions they made back in January, decisions they then hid from investigators and their own boss for months. If you look at uh, chronologically the way things went, there's really no way to uh, fight the circumstances. Attorney Trent Walker represents Michael Corey Jenkins and Eddie Parker. The two black men brutalized and assaulted that night. Walker says he thinks these officers' stories fell apart early on because of how former Deputy Hunter Elward shot Jenkins in the first place. There is really no logical explanation as to why an entry wound would ever come from the inside of someone's mouth. Mm -hmm. And once that particular domino fell, then everything else fell behind it because there's no explanation for that. Sooner or later, their, their backs were going to be against the wall. They're going to have to decide to take it to trial or else plead guilty. All six pleaded guilty to conspiracy. Elward pleaded guilty to aggravated assault and home invasion. Christian Dedman pleaded guilty to home invasion too. The other four, former deputies Brett McAlpin, Jeffrey Middleton, Daniel Opdyke, and former Richland police officer Joshua Hartfield, admitted they were hindering the prosecution's efforts by filing false police reports and lying to investigators. To my uh, knowledge, never in the history of Mississippi uh, have, uh, in particular, white officers been held to account for brutality against uh, black victims. To my knowledge, this is That's the right. first time that this has occurred. I hope um, this is a lesson to uh, everybody out there. Justice will be served. All right, so I'm glad that justice was served for Michael Corey, uh, Jenkins, and uh, Eddie Terrell Parker, first and foremost. Before we get into the point, I'm glad justice was served. Now, if they were able to cover this up for two men that lived through the torture, I just want to know if in this county that is majority white police officers or probably the entire team, um, what else has been covered up? Because it seems that they have been linked to at least four other violent attacks on black men since 2019 and which two of the men died, right? So you take that into account. These brothers actually live. They probably didn't expect for them to, and they were able to cover up uh, two bodies already since 2019 and rest in peace to whoever was impacted by that. But when you start to see these goon squads, this is no different. I don't, like I said, Gangs and police uh, uniform does not change how I look at anything. Like, bad policing is bad policing, right? The same way that, you know, rest in peace to uh, Tyree Nichols, the brother that was beat in, in, in Memphis by people that looked like him. You know, this is no different for me. Even though that these brothers didn't die, their goal was for them to be killed, regardless of how it was, and they was already going to cover it up until the investigation started. But look how long... It's been going on since 2019. There's already two people dead that, okay, we're going to find out what happened with that. They, they may be pending on some other charges. They could be the goon squad that did this, you know, allegedly. But, you know, these are the type of things that we just have to be mindful of is when we, these people go into these uniforms and they're able to patrol the streets and have access to documents and things of that process, they're able to do whatever the hell they want to do and think that they can get away with it, especially when they're in a, predominantly white environment that would protect them in the same way that it was in Memphis when they were in a predominantly black environment and thought that it would be okay to treat the brother the way they treat them. It's just bad policing. You're there to arrest or de-escalate the situation, not enhance it or do your own gang shit in the name of being a police officer. Let me know your thoughts. Long live CC. I'm out.